I can think of no better way than to uh, begin my reflections on peace and to recite al Fatiha, the first seven verses of the Quran. So I invite you to uh, join me in spirit as I recite. In the name of God, most gracious, most merciful, praise be to God, the cherisher and sustainer of the worlds, most gracious, most merciful, master of the day of judgment, <clears throat> thee do we worship, and thy name do we seek. Show us a straight way, the way unknown of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, those whose portion is not wrath, and who go not astray. Peace is something that I think we all desire. Uh, we want peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, our neighborhoods, and peace in our world. And I uh, imagine that the ultimate objective of Marty is peace, world peace. And yet, how do we obtain this goal in a world that seems intent on war? Fortunately, we have uh, a wonderful Turkish example in Atula Ulen, whom Murat mentioned. Uh, he is a humble, influential, and outstanding scholar, writer, lecturer, and peace activist. Atula Ulen is a Sufi-inspired Muslim, and he's known for creating schools of tolerance and peace, and also hospitals, a TV station, and a newspaper dedicated to promoting peace. Ulen has chosen two means to build peace, education and dialogue. As a university professor, I find Gulen's words about education challenging and even daunting, a little scary. He says, those who are charged with the education of our young people today will be responsible for the vices and the virtues that will appear in the next 25 years. I hate to think I'm responsible for that. But so the first means for building education, for building peace, is education. And education, as Ruben says, is not about transmitting knowledge only, but also about communicating a way of life, a way of living that will build unity among people and with all creation. The Ruben movement has built hundreds of schools of tolerance in over 80 different countries of the world with the help of volunteers. I want to mention six Filipino-Turkish schools of tolerance. The first of these high schools was built in 1995. They are built in the Philippines in areas that are half Christian and half Muslim, bridging a gap. The schools hire Turkish teachers for math, science, computer information skills. The students live in dormitories that are of mixed religion and culture. They do community service together, so their perceptions of the other are changed. And the students learn from experience that difference can make us stronger. Another example I want to mention is the six schools of tolerance in Iraq. Since 1999, six schools have been built in northern Iraq. These schools serve as islands of peace in a warring nation and world. In these schools, Sunni, Shia, and Kurdish Muslims study together the same syllabus in the same classroom. These students are taught through instruction and example the universal values of honesty, tolerance, fairness, responsibility, respect for others, and cooperation. Once the students have graduated, 
many of them train as teachers so that they can be teachers in these Gulen schools of tolerance. They travel the world building these peace building skills for a new generation. So education is the first means that Gulen uses and dialogue is the second. Gulen says that the very nature of religion demands dialogue, demands a conversation in which we share ideas, opinions, and values. Judaism, Christianity, and Islam in particular have a lot to say to one another and share with each other because we have the same source, the God of Abraham. Religious dialogue can be a road to bringing everyone together under one tent. Gulen says the first step is to forget the hurts of the past, something that's not easily achieved. The second is to ignore polemical arguments. And the third, to give precedence to what we have in common. An example of uh, building dialogue for peace would be the Gulen Institute Youth Platform. This was founded in 2007 in collaboration with the University of Houston. And each year the Institute sponsors an international essay contest for high school students. Last year, 600 students from 35 states in the United States and 53 countries participated in this essay contest. And the topic of the essay, now this was for high school students, is a two-line topic. It's, it is the use of military means as a solution to today's international and national political issues, diplomacy or war, democracy or military coup. In April of 2011, the winners of their families and their, and their educators came together in Washington, D.C. to receive awards from embassy personnel and members of Congress. They shared four days in Washington with two full days of dialogue with 100 students from around the world. And the students gave glowing testimonies of how this event changed their lives and their view of the world. So what can we do? We cannot all do the work of Fethullah Gulen, but we can each do something. We can first of all be aware of our prejudices and try to uh, overcome them. We can educate ourselves about religions other than our own. And we can seize any opportunity for interreligious dialogue. Even if we accomplish one of these, I think we will be one step closer to achieving peace for ourselves and for our world. Thank you.